All right, welcome back, guys. We are on the last fundamental problem from this section, okay? And uh, so let's get started with it. <clears throat> so we have a, you know, this beam with a concentrated load at C and then a moment at end A, okay? So first we'll start off by solving for these guys. AX, AY, we know that's zero because there's nothing in the X. And then BY. Okay. So then, first thing we do is solve for these reactions. So we have AY plus BY minus 4 equals zero. And then taking a moment about A. At A, we already have a moment of negative 12, right? So we start off with that, minus 12. Then we're going to take into account the 4, the moment that the 4 contributes, which is another negative moment. So 4 times 3. Okay, and then plus 6by. So it's minus 12, minus 12, minus 24, divided by 6. Flip it over to that side, we have four kilonewtons. Okay. And then putting this in here, four minus four is zero, so it means AY is zero. Okay. Sweet. Okay. So now we have our reaction forces, all right? And now we want to make two cuts again after something happens so a we have a moment but before c okay so we're going to make a cut here and then the second cut is going to come after four but before b so boom right there so this will be one and two now we'll split it up like last time okay so this will be between 0 and 3, and this one will be, oops, between 3 and 6. Okay, so first off, we start off with some, you know, some chunk here in the left side. Okay, so we made a cut at 1, and now we're looking at just a little piece of that beam. So AY and AX are zero, so it's pretty much nothing other than 12 kilonewton meter, okay? And then our reaction forces, sorry, our internal forces, V1, and then our internal moment, M1. Okay. So in the Y direction, as you suspect, v1 will be 0. So there's no shear between 0 and 3. Okay. And then looking at the moments, we have positive m1 minus 12 equals 0. So then m1 is 12. Okay. Take a derivative of a constant and it's 0. So we have v1 is 0. Perfect. Now, we're going to look at, so there's, there's two options. So we can look at this one, so we can look at cut, up to cut two, right? And we include the four kilonewton in this way. Or we can look at the right-hand side here, okay? So we made that cut at two, so we can either look at this side or we can choose to look at the left hand side, which is what we usually do. But since we've already, we're, you know, we're kind of getting used to looking at the left hand side, let's do one with looking at the right side of the cut, okay? Um, that way we don't have to include any of those extra, look, we, we just look at the, at the side that has the least forces, okay? Now, this length now is going to be L minus X. Okay, L in, our, in this case is 6. So L is the length of the beam, so it's going to be 6. 
and then it's going to be minus x, okay? And then we have by here of 4 kilonewtons, okay? And then we just need our reaction, or sorry, our internal force, V1, oh, sorry, V2 in this case, and our internal moment, M2, okay? So if you, once we're done with this, I would recommend trying it out, just looking at the left-hand side and then matching your results, okay? You should see that you get the same thing, except this one will be less time-consuming, okay? So let's do that. So forces in the Y direction. We have V2 going up plus 4. So we have V2 is minus 4. Kilonewtons, okay? Again, I don't, I know I forget the units all the time, but, you know, that's not the important part of this. So M2, okay? We have M2 acting in the clockwise direction, so minus M2. And then we have this 4 kilonewton force, all right, um, acting counterclockwise. So it's going to be 4, uh, 4 times 6 minus x, because that's the length of that beam, equals 0. All right, so m2 equals 4, 6 minus x, which will be 24 minus 4x. And just like I tell you guys all the time, or we check all the time, we're going to check the moment, the derivative m of m2 with respect to x, and make sure that it does match up to negative 4, and it does. Awesome. Okay. Now we have our, we have equations to describe both sides of, or both intervals of this beam. So let's do, okay. We have x, this will be the shear, okay, and then we have our moment, here's 0, 3, 6, 6, and let's put 3 here, okay, and this is 0. So let's start off with v1, okay. So from 0 to 3, V1, the function for V1 is just 0. Okay, so we don't expect to see anything. Boom, okay. And now let's look at V2. So that's from 3 to 6. That's going to be a constant negative 4. Okay. So minus 4. Minus 4. Okay. Okay, and that's our shear diagram, okay? I wish I could make it solid. Okay, now we will do the moment diagram, okay? So let's look at M1. Oh, okay. M1 is uh, just a constant from 0 to 3, all right? So we're going to have, let's see, 4, 8, and 12. So it's positive 12 all throughout the first half of the beam, okay? And then notice how at 0, I have 12, obviously, which is the 12 that's acting at A, okay? Now, let's look at M2, describing it from 3 to 6. So evaluating this at 3, okay, this gives me back 12. So I, I, I begin right there. All right, and then I look at it at x equals 6, so then 24 minus 4 times 6, which is 0. So then we have the resultant moment diagram looking like this. Okay. And that's it. So now we've been able to do triangles, you know, distributed loads with a triangle and scaling it to length x and uh, multiple sections or multiple cuts. 
um, you know, all kinds of different ways we've, we've done these problems now. All right. Hopefully you've been able to build your toolbox of, of uh, methods and how to solve these. Okay. I hope to do more complex ones later on. All right, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, if you have questions, comments, leave them down below. Be happy to respond as soon as I can. Take it easy, guys.